This is an iPhone 15, and on it, I'm currently running Project IDX, Google's new web-based and AI-enhanced cloud IDE. And today, I'm going to see if I can write a React and Next.js web app with nothing but my phone and IDX. For personal projects, I program on a MacBook with the M1 chip. Meanwhile, this iPhone 15 runs on the A16 Bionic, which contrary to what you may think initially, is actually architecturally superior over the M1 and boasts 15% faster single core CPU performance. However, it does lag behind in the number of CPU and GPU cores. Overall, as much as switching from a MacBook to a phone may seem like a downgrade, computationally, it isn't really much of one. But as it turns out, I don't really need a device with good specs. The idea behind Project IDX is that your projects can be hosted on the cloud, which in this case would be Google servers. This means that no matter what device you have, you can near instantly connect to a blazingly fast remote server and start development right in your browser. In fact, IDX is based on VS Code, so the UI was quite easy to settle into. The only hardware requirement is that your screen is capable of loading that UI. And well, I hope this is big enough. Now let's get into the fun stuff. I booted up IDX on my phone, and surprisingly, it didn't prevent me from opening the website on such a small screen. To be fair, I probably would have circumvented it anyway, but this just made my life so much easier. First thing that we had to do was to create a new workspace. IDX made this simple, and after selecting Next.js as our tech stack, we can name our workspace. The input zoom is one of the most annoying things about this challenge, and I couldn't find an easy way to disable it. Apparently, I could have injected some HTML metadata to prevent it, but I wasn't going to go through the whole process on mobile. After giving a descriptive name and editing some options, all we had to do was wait for the environment to load. After loading, this is just simply the VS Code UI. We have everything we have in the normal VS Code from the actual editor, to the sidebar, to even extensions. Let's install one dark pro, so that our eyes don't die from the light theme. As you can probably see, I'm struggling quite a bit with clicking the right buttons, and when you're using an app designed to be full screen on a standard laptop, or you know, Envision Pro on a 6.1 inch iPhone, that's expected. So now is probably a good time to admit that I will be breaking the only rule in this entire challenge, using only an iPhone. But don't worry, it's just a keyboard and mouse for the sake of my fingers. For reference, my eyes will probably still suffer from the strain of staring at such a small screen, and my sanity may still crumble, but that's a bit harder to fix. Connecting peripherals to an iPhone is a bit more challenging than doing so on, say, my MacBook that I'd much rather be using right now. In fact, you probably don't even know you could do it. The keyboard connects out the box through Bluetooth, but using a mouse is a bit more involved. After connecting it, you have to go through accessibility, the touch menu, and enable assistive touch. Now, your iPhone is more or less a mini iPad. Now back to IDX, with a mouse and keyboard, the user experience is a lot better, but admittedly, it is still a lot worse than using something like a Mac. Now the next thing I want to do is drag this preview window, which shows what is going on with our next project, below our editor, so we can actually see changes in lifetime, instead of having everything squished together. The minor problem, however, is the fact that dragging is disabled, so what I'm going to have to do is close this tab, then I will use the command palette to create a split to down, and use the command palette again to show the web preview. As you can see, this whole thing might take a longer time than I imagined. Alright, now that we have our environment completely set up, I'm going to figure out what we're going to make. The goal was to use a tech stack that is modern and something that I would actually use, which for me is React and Next.js. In this particular situation, we will be sticking with no backend, even though IDX has great Firebase integration. Furthermore, I also chose to initialize the project with Tailwind, which is a great CSS library. Finally, with this tech stack, I want to make something that would be reminiscent of something that I would actually make. I decided to go with a to-do app, simple yet full of various features like input boxes, buttons, and lists that I could implement through React. The first thing that I'm going to start off by doing is removing all of the template code that Next.js has. Next up, I'll go ahead and center everything in the main layout div. As you can see, the life update actually works pretty quickly and you can 
basically see all of your changes in lifetime, which for me is a very important feature for any editor. The next thing that we need to do is lay out some of the components. So of course for our to-do list, we're going to need a search bar to enter all of our to-dos, a new to-do button, as well as a list to view all of our existing to-dos. For some reason in this live preview, all of the components don't have the default styling. For example, all of the buttons should have some form of a background color if you're viewing it on most browsers, but in this preview window, it doesn't, which is really strange, but I will have to mitigate that just by providing custom styles for everything. Next up, I'm going to keep this really simple. So we're just gonna make a state handler for our input box. As you just saw there, there is AI auto completion in IDX, which personally for me, and especially in this challenge is a game changer because that way I don't have to type everything. I can sort of get AI to do part of the work for me. The other really important thing is, of course, we are in a Next.js context, so we're going to need to set this to use client. Finally, we can link that state to our actual input box. Great, the next thing we have to do is create a state for all of our to-dos, which in our case will just be a simple array. Next, we're just gonna add some simple utility functions that will add a to-do as well as delete a to-do at a certain index. When we're adding a to-do, I'll just make it add whatever is in our input state variable. And after it's added, you'll just set input to an empty string. Next utility function will be deleting a to-do. We're just gonna do that with array.splice. Of course, we have to remember to first create a clone of whatever is in a state so that we're not directly mutating state. Finally, we'll just set to-dos to our new to-dos. The next thing we have to do is dynamically render all of the to-dos in a list, which React has great support for built in. We're simply going to go down here and type to-dos.map and return a new div for every single to-do. To prevent React from complaining, we're going to need to associate an index with every single div. We're going to apply a background color so we can see each to-do, and we're also gonna apply flex justify between so that we can push the actual to-do content and the delete button to opposite sides of the screen. Inside the actual to-do, of course, we're gonna have to render the to-do itself, as well as provide a delete button. And that should basically be it for our most basic app. Let's try to submit a to-do. And it doesn't work. Ah, yes, because I forgot to make the button run anything. So when the button is clicked, I'm just gonna make it run uh, handle add to-do. Now if we try it again, as you can see, our to-do is successfully added. And if we try to delete it, it also works. With that, our basic to-do app is done. However, I'd like to take it a step further. As I mentioned before, all of our UI components are super simple. And to fix that, I'd like to try to import Daisy UI, which is a Tailwind styling library. In order to do so, we're going to have to run npm install manually, which we haven't done yet. So let's see how IDX works with the terminal. In order to open the terminal, we're gonna do this through the command palette again. As you can see at the bottom of our screen, we now have a terminal to work with. Now what we're going to do is simply npm install daisy UI at latest.
and there we go, Daisy UI is installed just like that. But before we're completely done, we also have to stick this into our tailwind.config.js. In a plugin section, we're going to write require daisy UI. Just like that, daisy UI should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and test this by putting btn instead of all of the junk that we had before inside the submit button. And just like that, we see that our daisy UI styles have been applied. And it's actually really simple to work with this in IDX. It's almost like you have this local environment running on your computer, or in this case, my phone, and I'm simply installing packages on it. Let's go ahead and refactor the rest of our code to use Daisy UI. Just like that, now we have a nice ordered input, and this looks so much better than what we just had before. Final thing we have to do is style the list of to-dos. Let's start by adding a border radius to each to-do. Then let's add some vertical margins. And finally, let's go ahead and style that delete button. In this case, let's use the outline error button. Now if we make a new to-do, you can see that our delete button has nice styling. The last issue here is that the alignment is now a little bit off because the button is larger than the text, but that's nothing we can't fix with a little bit more flexbox magic. Let's also, while we're at it, make this color a little bit lighter so that it's not super disturbing. Finally, as a few touch-ups, I added a little bit of margins at the top as well as to the left of the submit button. And now we have a semi-well-styled to-do app that was built on nothing but an iPhone. To recap, we have the ability to create a to-do. We can view our to-dos in a kind of nice looking list. And finally, we can also delete our to-dos simply by clicking the delete button. And just like that, we've used Google's cloud-based IDX editor to build a fully functional to-do app on nothing but an iPhone 15. This video was extremely tedious to plan out and pretty tiring to make, so if you did enjoy this, please let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.